Hi everyone and welcome to this video on building op-amp circuits. I know that it can be tricky to get used to building circuits, especially when you first get started, so I wanted to put together this video to give you a little bit more background on building some of the op-amp circuits. And to do that, we're going to build the impedance buffer that I talked about in the introductory video for the lab. So this picture over here is particularly important because it shows you what all the pins on the op-amp package that we'll use do. So you're going to want to refer back to this picture frequently while you're building your circuits. So here's my setup for the impedance buffer, and there's a lot going on here, but we're just going to take it nice and easy, and hopefully it'll make sense. What I do when I start building a circuit is that I look over at the schematic, see what connections I need to make, and then just start working through the connections one by one until I've made all of the connections that I need to. So the first thing I'm going to look at here is connecting my function generator and the oscilloscope to the non-inverting input labeled VP here on the op amp. I'll show you how I made that connection to the oscilloscope in just a minute, but first let's look at how I connected the function generator to the op amp circuit here. Looking down at the diagram of the op amp here, I can see that VP, or again the non-inverting input, is on pin 3 of the op amp. So pin 3 is right over here, and that's where I connected my function generator. I have the signal coming in on the red lead here and I have the ground from the function generator on this black lead. I marked them off with masking tape just to help me keep straight which one was the input and which ones were the output. And you can see that I connected the ground here through to my ground buzz. Let's go back now and take a look at how to make the connection between the function generator and the first channel of the oscilloscope. And essentially all this diagram is showing us is that we need the function generator to be connected to the first channel of the oscilloscope and the function generator to be connected to the non-inverting input of the op amp. Now we've already made the connection between the function generator and the op amp, so now we just want to make this connection to the oscilloscope. And to do that, the easiest way, I think, is to use one of these T connectors that we have in the lab here. And all you have to do is connect that to your function generator. And I took one side of the function generator signal and brought that over to the breadboard and the op amp. And then the other side of the signal was split off, and I just used a cable that had BNC connectors on both sides and brought that over to the oscilloscope. So now I'll be able to look at the output from the function generator on channel 1, and I'll be able to look at the output from the op amp on channel 2. The next thing that I did is I connected the positive and negative supplies, and I did all this with the function generator and the breadboard off. So here's my positive supply, and I connected that through to, down here I see that the positive supply needs to be pin 7 on the op amp, so I connected that through to pin 7 here. Then I connected the negative input, which I can see down here needs to be on pin 4 of the op amp, so I connected that down through this green wire to pin 4. And then up top here I see that the output of my op amp, which is coming down here, I see is pin 6 right over here. That output needs to be connected over to the inverting input, which is labeled VN, and the inverting input is pin 2. So I connected the output here on pin 6 over through the short brown wire to pin 2. And then I also wanted to connect my output to the oscilloscope second channel, and the oscilloscope is on these two leads here. So I connected the output through this brown wire to my output before, which was on pin 6 again. And I connected the ground from the oscilloscope to the ground here. And I also connected all these, this ground bus here, as it says in this note, up to the ground post on my breadboard. One other thing I want to show you quickly is that I've kept my circuit neat and I've used color-coded wires, which would help me if I needed to debug this circuit. So for example, I've used a yellow wire here for the positive voltage supply connection. I've used a green wire for the negative voltage supply connection. I've used blue for the most part for grounds, except for I used this little black wire here going up to the ground post on the breadboard. But you can see that keeping it like this helps to keep the circuit clean, and it'll definitely help you if you need to find any bugs in the circuit later on.